People ask me all the time, Kyle, why do you mock draft so much? And the answer is easy. Practice makes perfect. Are you really that good the first time you do something? What about your very first dance? Your partner's feet probably got stepped on a few times. Fast forward to your wedding night. Look at you now. Partner shoes, scuff free. What about if you went back in time and talked to your first love? Well, they would probably shrug their shoulders and laugh at you a little bit when you asked them how it went that first time. Changing a diaper is the same way. The first time you change the diaper, probably very slow and very careful with it because that devil spawn that has come out of the angel that is your child, you don't want that touching you anywhere. But now you're a master of changing diapers. You change them quicker than Antonio Brown changes his mind about whether or not he wants to play in the NFL this year. So for mock drafting, again, it's simple. Practice makes perfect. And in this mock draft, we're going to practice drafting from the turn. So there are no surprises for you when you do your draft so you can win a football championship here in 2020. Hey, what's going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle with the Fantasy Headliners back on another Mock Draft Monday. And you know how we love to do it here on the Fantasy Headliners. It's not the same old Mock Draft over and over. When we pop, lock, and mock it here at the Fantasy Headliners, we like to talk a little bit of strategy, what you can do from different positions, different actual strategies you can implement in your Mock Drafts. So then when you're doing your real drafts in 2020, there's no surprises for you and you're feeling confident and you have a game plan. Now, for this mock draft, we enlisted the help of our Patreon supporters. So if you want to do stuff like this with us, you can head over to Patreon. There is a link down below in the comment section, or excuse me, in the description of the video that will take you over to Patreon and you can go over there and support the channel. $5 a month will get you access to all of our exclusive content, all of our extra articles, extra videos. You can do these things with us. For the $20 tier, the MVP level, that gets you in a group chat with myself, Jake, all the other writers here at the Fantasy Headliners, all of our MVP level Patreons, and it gets you access to all of our exclusive content and DFS picks every single week. So if you want to be a part of that, head over to Patreon and support today. Again, little as $5 a month, and you can be doing these things with us. So for this mock draft, I really wanted to talk about the turn a little bit. Because a lot of times I see fantasy football owners talk about drafting in the turn. Now, some of you like it. Some of you like drafting in the turn because you like taking players back to back. Other people hate it. And I feel like more people dislike it than like it because a lot of things can happen when you have to wait and pick so long in between. So let's talk a little bit about things that you can do to really master drafting in the turn this year in case it happens to you. So number one. You have to draft aggressively. Do not be afraid to draft players well before their ADPs. We hear this saying in football all the time, right? They're playing not to lose the game instead of playing to win the game. You should always play to win your drafts. Do not play not to lose your drafts. Now, I'm not going to tell you to be super crazy, okay? Don't go out there and draft a guy with a fourth round ADP in the second round, okay? You can probably wait until the third round. Don't get too crazy on me. Again, aggressive and crazy are two completely different things. But don't be afraid to go out there and get your guys. If you sense that some sort of a run is coming, you have to be out ahead of that. And again, that's another point. Try to stay ahead of the runs. And no, I'm not talking about taking some Pepto-Bismol before that 1 a.m. Taco Bell retreat that you're taking, okay? That's not the type of run I'm talking about. The run I'm talking about is when you've got like eight quarterbacks going in 10 picks. So maybe you're picking at the end of the round, you take the pick, you go with the position player, and then all of a sudden, boom, quarterback, gone, 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 gone. What that does to us, instead of drafting aggressively, it makes us draft passively. Now our draft, what we're doing is being dictated by the people around us because when they put us in a position where we feel that we have to take a player, 
we're losing at that point. We can never be in that position. Never put yourself in a spot where you feel like you have to take a player because the teams around you are drafting players. you got to be out ahead of those runs, which means you have to anticipate and react quickly. You have to be able to do that when you're picking so far in between. You're not in the middle of a round, so if all of a sudden a quarterback run starts to happen, you're not going to be able to say, oh, hey, that's all right, I can grab one here real quick, a couple of guys have gone off the board. No. Same thing for wide receivers or running backs or tight ends. Okay, You have to anticipate when those things may be happening. Don't be afraid to start those. Start those runs. Okay, Be the guy to take that quarterback first or girl. Be the person to take that tight end first. Okay, Don't be afraid to start those runs. Don't let other people dictate what you're doing in your draft. You dictate it. You draft to win. You draft aggressively and you will have a great draft. So again, for this mock draft, we're going to be talking about what I did when I drafted from the turn. And again, we used our Patreon supporters to help us through this draft. And this is a 10-team Superflex draft. I've seen the questions a lot in the comments. Kyle, can you talk about Superflex? Can you talk about 10 teams? Typically, all of our mocks that we do are based on a 1QB 12-team league. That's kind of the standard right now. Superflex is becoming super popular, though. So if you haven't tried it, I encourage you to give it a shot. So again, 10-team Superflex. You can start two quarterbacks, two running backs, three wide receivers, and a tight end. So even though it's a 10-team league, it's still pretty deep because we have a lot of starting spots. So let's take a look at that draft board. Let's look and see who is on there right now. Now, again, I I drafted at the end of the round, okay? I was the 10th pick in the first round. A lot of running backs went in that first round. You can see them all going there. Again, these are our Patreon supporters. They know that we love taking running backs early. They agree with us, so they're taking them pretty early as well. Now, let me talk about why I went with Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler here, Okay. Here at the end of the first round, I went ahead and decided this because when the ball comes back to me at the end of the third, I did not feel I was going to have these high upside safe running backs here. There were going to be some good running backs available to me, but I thought to myself, hey, I'm going to take Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler, two guys that don't have a ton of competition for touches, are going to be on the field a lot. Austin Eckler, PPR monster. This is a half PPR format. Derrick Henry, hopefully he gets a few more touches in the passing game this year. If not, no big deal because all that volume on the ground will still be there. So let me take these super safe volume guys that are going to give me a ton of touches this year. And then what I'm going to do when the ball comes back to me in the third and fourth round, I'm going to take some high upside wide receivers. I'd rather do that than drafting a high upside wide receiver right now and then potentially not getting another running back to fall to me later. Right now, I have the running back sitting there in front of me that I absolutely love. Go with them. Again, you're dictating your draft. Take the guys that you want. If I was drafting in the middle of the round, I probably could have done it a little bit differently, but give me these guys right now. And again, it comes all the way back to me at the 3.10 and the 4.1. Amari Cooper, I go ahead and go with, and DK Metcalf. Now, I love Amari Cooper this year. He is a must-have wide receiver for me. I am trying to get him in every single league I possibly can. I truly believe in him. But I know, ladies and gentlemen, there are concerns about his consistency, and I don't love him as my wide receiver one. However, because Kenny Kenny Galladay is the guy. Kenny Galladay is the guy that I really wanted and was hoping would fall to me at the end of the third. It did not happen. So I decided to go with two high upside wide receivers. Again, I've already got my two running backs that I feel super safe with. So I feel like at this point, I can take two high high upside wide receivers. And later on in the draft, I can get some safer wide receivers to kind of pair with them. So that's why I went with those guys there. So we're done. Third and fourth round in the books out of the way. Now we're coming down to the fifth and sixth round. So we get to the fifth round, and Jonathan Taylor is sitting there staring at me. And at this point, I was thinking about taking a quarterback here. Okay, Deshaun Watson, Josh Allen, Matt Ryan were still on the board there. I was thinking to myself, man, I should start. This is a super flex league. Maybe I start my quarterback uh, quarterbacks here picks here in the fifth round. But then Jonathan Taylor is sitting there staring at me. And I say, you know what? Jonathan Taylor is my running back three in the fifth round is pretty good value because I've got my super safe running backs already. 
So if Jonathan Taylor starts the season off a little bit slow, kind of what I'm feeling right now, before he takes that volume away from Marlon Mack, before he gets fully instilled into that game plan, before he knows the playbook from top to bottom, it takes him a while maybe to adjust. No preseason games, all that good stuff. I can make it through the first few weeks, several weeks, if Jonathan Taylor really isn't a guy that I feel comfortable running out there. But by midseason, if he takes over as that starting running back and he is really killing it with volume and efficiency, I now have three running backs that could potentially be running back ones every single week. Okay, That is playoff championship building right there, relying on that volume within my running backs. So I may go ahead and pick him because I love my running backs. I want to make sure that I'm established there. I have to start two, but I have two flex spots. So I can flex in Jonathan Taylor at any point in time. But then Terry McLaurin is there. So you know what? I've got two high upside wide receivers right now. Let's go ahead and get my wide receiver three. Terry McLaurin is another guy that has a lot of upside, but he's pretty safe there in Washington. Okay, Washington's defense probably not going to be great this year. will be a lot better but probably won't be too great. They'll probably still have to throw it a little bit. He's not going to have a ton of a ton of competition for volume. He's really going to be that wide receiver one there. And that connection between him and Haskins, I truly, truly believe could be on a different level this year. So he's a guy that I, I'm really liking right here. So I say, you know what, let's go with Terry McLaurin. We're going to skip on quarterback again. We're going to risk it for the biscuit. And now I've got my running back one, two, three, wide receiver one, two, three, and I'm in a really good position there. So it comes all the way back to me, 7.1. I got to get my quarterback now. It's a super flex league. I don't want to get hung out to dry. That quarterback run really hasn't happened yet. Uh, And as you see here, there really wasn't an actual quarterback run. Okay, there wasn't an area where we saw a lot of quarterbacks going at one time. But here I'm like, I got to get Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is a quarterback one for me this year. I absolutely love him. Tons of upside. Going to be throwing the ball a lot as usual. Give me Matthew Stafford here. And then I thought about going with Tom Brady. I thought about saying, let me get my quarterbacks out of the way. I'm going to go Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford here. But then Darius Geis is sitting there. And you know what? I'm a Darius Geis fan. I like Darius Geis. Okay, my dynamic running back rating, exclusive content, only in our draft guide, a formula that I've built myself. And all the years that I've pulled that data, there is nobody that has ever had a higher score than what Darius Geis did in his limited time last season. If he gets the volume this year, again, I've already locked in stone my two top running backs. Those are guys I'm going to be able to put in every single week, and I'm going to be just fine. They're going to get volume. They're going to get points. They're going to be good. But now if I get Jonathan Taylor really taking off at midseason, and let's just say Darius Geis does too. Maybe the season does start a little bit slow. Maybe we see Adrian Peterson still out there. But his talent is going to win out. And if he stays healthy and he takes over as really the true running back one there midway through the season, Derrick Henry, Austin Eckler, Jonathan Taylor, and Darius Geis are going to be a championship roster with the upside of Amari Cooper and DK Metcalf. And then again, Terry McLaurin there as well. I've got my three really good wide receivers that I like, lots of upside in them. I've got tons of running backs. I've got safety and upside. So I go ahead and go with Darius Geis. I'm going to skip over my quarterback two here. I really like to take a quarterback a little bit early. Again, like I said, I was contemplating one in the fifth round. Ended up waiting till the seventh. I like to take one kind of in the middle, and I like to take one a little bit late. So now I've locked in my running back position. I am set at running back. I don't got to think about running back anymore at this point. And a lot of times later on in drafts, people are always trying to look for those handcuffs and grab those running backs because maybe they're a little bit thin. Not me. At this point, I've got four guys that I absolutely love, and I only have to start two. So again, all the way back through, and now we're back to the 9.10 and the 10.1. So give me Baker Mayfield at this point. The bake show, as we called them last year, is the bake sale this year because you can get them at a really good price, but I have not given up on the bake show yet at this point. I definitely think he bounces back. He's got too many weapons around him. He still is very talented, regardless of what you have to say about him. He has a ton of talent. I think he's going to put it together with Kevin Stefanski being his head coach now and a lot better play calling. So give him to me as my quarterback too. And then I go with Jamison Crowder, okay? Because again, I've got some high upside wide receivers, but give me the safety of Jamison Crowder. If he can get himself anywhere between 7 and 10 targets a week, 
He's going to be a guy that can be double digit and half PPR and PPR every single week. So if I got to start him, put him in my flex or on a bye week, whatever it may be, Jameson Crowder is a really good pick here because, again, being in a half PPR format, I've got a guy that I truly can run out there consistently that is going to score me points. I'm never going to lose a week because of Jameson Crowder. Maybe I don't win a week because of him, but I'm never going to lose a week because of Jameson Crowder. Okay, so I end up moving on from there. I get Baker Mayfield, get Jamison Crowder, and we're on again. Down the draft, we get back to the 11.1. And with the 11.1, I should have gone with another wide receiver. Okay, I had I, I had Anthony Miller sit in there. Um, I had uh, other guys, too, that I could have gone with, a Mike Williams, a Golden Tate. Because you have to start three wide receivers, and I only have four right now, I probably should have gotten a fifth. And that was my big misstep here because – at this point, I'm like, man, I don't really love any wide receivers at this point. So I wasn't drafting aggressively at the end of the draft, which I talked about to start this video. You gotta draft, you gotta draft aggressively, okay? Even if I didn't love those guys there, if there was guys that I loved later on, knowing they weren't gonna come back to me, I should have taken them. But I go with Hunter Henry instead. I should have skipped on Hunter Henry. I should have gone with Anthony Miller and then taken Janu Smith with my next pick, and then taken Daniel Jones around after that. That is the way the end of my draft should have played out. But again, saw Hunter Henry sitting there. Got a love affair with Hunter Henry. The dude's going to put it all together one day if he stays healthy. I really don't want to miss out on that. So I went with him there, and I shouldn't have. Okay, That was kind of, like I said, my one misstep in this draft. But you can kind of see how this draft played out. Okay, Even though it was a super flex league, quarterbacks were pretty evenly balanced throughout. This kind of reminded me more a little bit in terms of aggressiveness and drafting quarterbacks. It reminded me of a 1QB league. Timex 21-32 there in the middle. He goes with Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson to start his draft. And I talked to him a little bit about it. And he said he did that on purpose. You know, he's he's an avid supporter of the channel. He hangs around all the time. Um, good dude. Talk to him a lot. And he really is on board with us when it turn, comes to, you know, really late round strategy with quarterbacks, which is what we preach here. But he was like, I want to give it a shot. I want to see how my team plays out. He didn't he didn't hate it. He said it wasn't his favorite team, but he didn't hate it either. Uh, you know, another one, too, at the very first pick there, Kelly Kid, Josh Nutson, another guy that hangs around quite a bit. Um, definitely, he's been around with the Fantasy Headliners for quite a while now as a supporter, and we appreciate him as well. You know, he goes really kind of balanced to start the draft. He goes running back, wide receiver, tight end. So he gets Russell Wilson there in the fifth. But again, James White ends up being his running back two. And I don't love that. And trust me, I love James White this year. But as my running back two and a half PPR league, eh, it's a little too spicy for me. You know, I don't don't want to go down that road. And that's, again, kind of pointing back to why I'm drafting those running backs heavy. is so I don't get into a position where I've got to rely on a guy like that later on in the draft. So, you you know, that was another one there. You know, Lior Colton, one of our headliner guys here, he really did really good. Uh, He did really good with this draft. He's one of our writers here, Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake, excuse me, to get started. Those are the two guys he starts with. And then Cup, Robinson, and OBJ down to the fifth round. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, OBJ is slipping down draft boards this year. It's absolutely incredible. His his team to start is absolutely fantastic. And then he gets Tom Brady, Drew Locke, and Ryan Tannehill as his quarterbacks. Lior killed this draft he was really the one draft that i looked at that being a whole lot better than mine i really liked my draft i didn't mind it at all i think i did really good with a lot of it uh in terms of kind of staying uh you know staying in the groove drafting aggressively kind of being ahead of what i thought was going to happen i thought i did really really well with that so headliner nation i'm going to throw the ball back in your court and i want a grade from you that is right down in the comments below give me a grade Did I get an A? Did I knock it out of the park? A B? Yeah, it was pretty good. A C? Eh, okay. You're probably going to lose a few games this year. It's not a D, ladies and gentlemen. Get out of here. If you think that draft is a D, you're just trolling, all right? I'm not taking that seriously. That was a pretty good draft, in my opinion. A, B, or C? Let me know in the comments below what you're thinking. But there you have it, Headliner Nation. That was dominating the term. Some tips and strategies that you can use to make sure that if you're drafting in the turn this year, that you don't end up falling behind and letting the draft dictate you, you dictate the draft. Again, let me know my grade in the comments below and hit the like button on this video. We're shooting for a goal of a 1,000 likes on all of our videos. So hit that like button for me if you enjoyed the content and appreciate it. And of course, if you're new to the Fantasy Headliners, 
hit that subscribe button and become a part of the road to 100,000 here on the Fantasy Headliners. Do me a favor, Headliner Nation. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.